Good afternoon. As most of you may know, my name is Veronica Farias, and I'm the Communications Director for Shenandoah Book Health District. Um, as Luke mentioned, you heard from our um, Outreach Coordinator, Medium, on Monday. So my presentation today will focus primarily on our communication efforts. Um, I want to start with a little bit of background so that you can better understand who I am, where I come from, and how my experience has contributed to um, my communication efforts in this agency. So I was born in Chelan, raised in Manson. I come from a farm working family. I graduated Manson High School in 2008. I moved to Wenatchee um, and attended Wenatchee Valley College. I eventually transferred to Gonzaga University where I had the honor to study abroad, something that I am very um, prideful and grateful for given the fact that I'm a first generation college student in my family, a college graduate in my family. I graduated Gonzaga University in 2013. I met, later that year, I met my now husband, Martin. And even though we don't have any children together, we do have two fur babies, Mari, Mari, and Lola. In 2016, I joined the Chelan Douglas Health District as a clerk typist. I worked the reception um, for a few months and then I worked my way up to environmental health, working as a program assistant. In uh, 2018, I applied for the communications coordinator role. And in 2020, I officially took on the director role. Uh, we all know what happened in 2020. So <laughs> the role, the floor was literally mine. Next slide. So I wanna start off by just um, doing a quick overview of what the um, Foundational Public Health Services Functional Definitions Manual um, considers communications as. Um, so it's the ability to engage and maintain relations with our media and the ability to develop and implement a communication strategy um, to help increase visibility on public health issues, um, inform the community on health risks, healthy behaviors, and disease prevention, everything in the um, culturally and uh, linguistically appropriate formats. So when I first started as a communications coordinator, uh, there was really no legitimate budget. Um, it was just one person team. Um, it was myself and any um, of our communication efforts were really just reactive, if I'm being quite honest. Um, any uh, purchases or communication expenses that we had um, were um, you know, approved or reviewed and approved by um, administrator. And that was just kind of at an ad hoc basis. Um, as you can see with my current budget now, most of our funds are allocated to support services, including website support and marketing support. We have translation services and um, advertisements like radio and billboards. For the first half of the year, it looks like we're pretty well under budget, but I do anticipate that we will incur um, more costs as we move into our summer uh, campaigns prepare for our back to school campaigns and then move into fall and winter campaigns such as winter preparedness. So I have a budget now and what are the different avenues that we can take to communicate effectively? So we have traditional media and digital media. So I'll touch base on traditional media first. So traditional media includes radio, billboards, newspaper, television, and mailers. So currently we are running weekly radio ads throughout local um, radio stations like KPQ and La Nueva. And then another um, form of traditional media are advertisements. Um, this is what we are currently advertising at our South Financial Avenue billboard. And then um, this is a current ABC ad that we are currently running in Okanagan County. And then as well as traditional marketing, we have digital marketing or digital media. Um, this includes website and social media platforms. I won't dive into all of the analytics for each of these platforms, but I do want to make note of our Facebook uh, platform. This is um, the platform that has the most amount of followers. Um, almost half of our followers uh, for Facebook reside in the Wenatchee Valley. And um, Twitter, or sorry, Instagram and YouTube uh, we're actually two platforms that were implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we do have um, less followers there, but we are um, looking forward to growing that audience. 
So I have a budget, we have our communication avenues that we can take. And you're probably asking yourself, how do you determine what to communicate and when to communicate? Um, I've divided basically our communication efforts into um, what I call our regular and ongoing, just general communications and our emergency communications, which I will talk about um, in the next slide. But our regular and ongoing communications, um, we're working um, in, towards finalizing a public health calendar that can really help us be more proactive um, moving forward when it comes to communications. But um, these regular and ongoing communications include anything um, around seasonal reminders, public health tips, any events that we want to promote, campaigns. Um, and then we tailor our messages around awareness days, public health holidays, um, and seasons as well. So we're in the middle of what we call that season. So we're trying to educate the community on uh, what rabies is and what to do if they encounter bats. So if you follow us on social media, you'll probably see some of our graphics. And then we also issue a monthly newsletter the 15th of every month. So um, feel free to sign up for our newsletter on our homepage. Next slide. So as opposed to uh, monthly communications like our CDHD newsletter, we also have emergency communications. Uh, we did quite a bit of this during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but this includes uh, releases, advisories, food recalls, and then any um, same day TV, radio interviews, um, cold calls that we get from media, um, as well as press conferences. So this is just an example of a regional public health advisory um, that we did with Grant, Kittitas, and Okanagan um, during the uh, Delta surge. And this is just Luke and our governor at a press conference in Wenatchee. Mm -hmm. So I'd want, I really wanted to highlight a few of our, a couple of our communication milestones. Um, I think a lot of the staff here at the agency that has, who have been here for a while, or at least before I was here, um, can attest that um, our website has been one of the best or huge improvements um, that we've done in our communications department. In 2017, the previous communications director uh, received a grant to update our website. In 2019, or 2018, sorry, we went live with the English version. In 2019, we went live with the Spanish um, version of that website. And then the uh, pandemic hit and we realized um, that we were essentially updating uh, two different websites simultaneously. So that obviously highlighted a gap being a one person team um, or a one person department. Um, it was just not feasible for me. So. In 2021, we decided to do a soft redesign of our current website and uh, basically merged our English uh, website and our Spanish website. And we now have automatic translations and a better uh, user-friendly uh, design, but we continue to look for ways to better improve um, our website. So I'm not giving you any feedback. And then another, sorry. And then another uh, milestone uh, was two Certificates of Excellence Awards that we received from uh, the Public Relations Society of America um, for our Reopen Our Valley Mask Up campaign, as well as our Stay Home, Stay Safe campaign. And these are the actual artwork um, pieces that were displayed at billboards during those two campaigns. And so you've heard me talk about what's your healthy um, at previous board meetings. Um, the goal with this campaign was to um, really get local community champions to inform our communities as to what they're doing to stay healthy now that we find ourselves in this recovery phase of the pandemic. Um, these efforts include billboards, social media content, uh, radio buys, TV commercials, and theater ads. And before I move on to the next slide, I just wanted to thank um, Alma Chacon, current board member, for participating in our campaign. And then, so a part of um, what I do as the communications director is I also serve as the public information officer whenever we find ourselves in an emergency such as the COVID-19 pandemic. So I've served, I served as the PIO for the incident management team since it started. I have established um, good relationships with other PIOs um, not only here locally, but regionally as well. So we um, continue to seek, my team continues to seek guidance from the Department of Health and we um, maintain an 
attend ongoing meetings with a lot of uh, the PIOs where we network, share resources and trainings. Um, and this is just an example of a digital ad that we were running during um, the COVID-19 pandemic. This was a regional campaign. It was a make it to vaccinate campaign. And given the fact that here regionally, we do have a large uh, Spanish speaking population, we um, all of our ads and communication efforts have been in both English and Spanish. So you heard from Medium on Monday regarding our outreach. Um, so I won't dive deep into those efforts, but I do want to introduce the team in case there were any board members that did not make it to Monday's meeting. Uh, Miriam is our outreach coordinator. Um, Brenda and Adela are community health workers that assist the uh, outreach team. And together, we basically uh, table um, host CDHD information booths at various events, like community resource fairs, family-friendly um, events. We attend different community meetings um, and establish partnerships, like um, tabling at cafes, caravan events, and um, tagging along with uh, Columbia Valley Community Health now that they um, have started their migrant ag um, clinics uh, throughout the region. And um, I wanted just to make know that currently the um, outreach team is funded primarily through COVID FEMA funds, but we have received two grants, a multi-year community learning grant and um, an equitable response and recovery grant through the Group Health Foundation. So. I look forward to see what um, we can accomplish down the road. And then finally, I wanted to share just um, a few of the goals that I have for my department. I would like to see um, or try and do a rebranding down the road. Um, I'd like to form a uh, community health worker or promotora task force and um, perhaps establish an annual public health fair for the agency. And most importantly, even though I don't have any children of my own, I do have a close relationship with a lot of my nieces and nephews. And I've realized the importance of um, educating the younger generation to um, try and secure a much safer and healthier future for them. And I believe this concludes my report. So unless there's any questions. Any questions on communications? I've got a question and an observation. Uh, the observation is that uh, um, the difference between